I'm going to take the W3 again just lightly. Notice I'm using the very tip of my marker. Remember, you don't have to, if you watch my other videos, you don't have to pour a lot of ink into your paper to get the color. If your marker is refilled or filled good and you're using a great paper, you should not have to press hard to get the color to flow out. I'm just taking the easier zero again and darken that up a bit. And one thing with, um, let me go back to my first image, the distressed inks, is a lot of times the color of Scandinavian style, their cheeks are very, very pink. Usually I would do R20 and step it up a notch and do R21 and uh, make these cheeks darker. And of course, this is a personal preference. If you want to keep your cheeks lighter, that's up to you. And then I'm going to take my E00 again. And I'm just going to kind of flick the edges a little bit to blend them. And I'm going to take that colorless blender again and just feather it. And I see a few places where I want to go in darker. So I'm just going back in with my E13 and I'm darkening up a few of these edges. It's the beauty of Copics. You can keep adding and adding. I'm going to take E00 again and just flicking it to kind of blend it a little bit. I don't want to rub or circle. I don't want a big blend. I just want the lines to disappear a little bit. And that's another thing. You don't have to circle, 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 rub, rub, rub. I found that using Suzanne's technical term, flicking, you can get the same effect. And I'm just kind of flicking the ink. And that's how I would do her skin. They use a lot of um, white highlights as well. Um, and again, I use my Sharpie poster paint with extra fine tip. It is my favorite. I've tried them all. This is my favorite. I usually do one dot, but I notice Scandinavian style, I tend to do three. Um, they do a little bit of a thicker white line. But again, that's a personal preference if you don't want to do that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to her hair. Um, and I think that's all I'll be able to fit into this first video. And then we'll, um, the next video, I'll do her clothing. So for her hair, again, a lot of times the hair is very dark on the edges and then very, very light, almost to white in the, in the centers and the highlights. So for her hair, I used E47, or no, I'm sorry, E27, E25, and E31, and a little bit of E41. So starting with the darker, I'm going to go ahead and work those edges and I'm using the tip of my marker and I'm not coloring a thick line I'm just kind of flicking up into the hair and where underneath these curls would be dark And then up on her crown, where it would be shattered in the back. And I'm going to take my E31. And again, flicking from the darkest color up and not all the way through that center area. That's the area I want to keep the lightest. I'm working again. <coughs> See, I knew my dogs would bark for you. I just threw a treat on the ground, so hopefully they'll be quiet for a little bit. Um, again, I'm working with my E31, and I'm just flicking up. 
for the lightest color I'm using E41. This color I'm just going to kind of work in. And again, now that the color's dry, it's not dark enough. So I'm going to go back in with my E27. And darken up all these edges again. Take E31. And just flicking over and up what I've already done very lightly. I don't want it too dark. And then the E41 again. Look a little white in there. I see a few spots there that I missed. And then I'm going to take my W3 again and right in those darker areas I'm going to put some W3. Work some down into her face a little bit. Darken up a few of these areas. And that's how I would do her face, skin, and her hair. Alright, next video we'll work on her clothing.